with COVID-19 vaccines set to resume, South Africa has surpassed 300,000 doses delivered. This is at a rate of uh, much slower than every or most other countries on the continent. The Democratic Alliance is inspecting the readiness of vaccination sites across the country. For, uh, I guess, a report back on what they found, let's bring in DA Health spokesperson Sevier Kwahube, who's actually worried that three weeks before the COVID-19 max vaccinations begin, most sites are yet to be set up. As you can see, she joins us now via our video link. Sevier, thanks very much for your time. Great to have you again on the channel. Perhaps let's just get a sense of your most pressing concerns at this stage. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, Ayanda, and good morning to your viewers. Um, you know, it's also it's incredibly important as members of parliament that we go and see for ourselves in various communities all the reports that we get via parliament. And as a result, you are able to raise these issues directly with the minister, but having had a first-hand experience. One, there are a couple of things that are very common throughout the provinces that I've visited. Uh, the one is a number of the primary health care facilities. So, so the clinics which will now be um, activated for phase two, which were not operating under phase one, are simply not ready. And we know in this country historically that primary health care facilities are usually the weakest link. But it's incredibly important that those facilities are actually quite jacked up because they are the facilities that are closest to the people. So the, a number of primary health care facilities that we visited aren't ready. Cold storage uh, capacity is not um, up to scratch. Security, because obviously, if you're going to be storing and administering vaccines in your facility, you've got to make sure that you've got the requisite security. And a big one for particular clinics is space. They're very worried about where are we going to set up this vaccination um, site so that we can make sure that people can sit and not sit on top of each other. And then the big thing, Ayanda, for me, which is a common theme across all the provinces I've seen, is the lack of awareness around registration. Now, the reason why this is quite important is because if we allow people to simply rock up at facilities on the 17th of May, as you've said now, with the, with the numbers increasing, then in, 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 inevitably what you're going to have, you're going to be doing it basically having super spreader events at various facilities. And so I think it's quite important, which is what I'll be taking up with the minister this week, that we need to have a concerted effort to let people know how to register, where to register, so that they can keep to their dates. Yeah. I mean, you know, there is still some time until the 17th of May. So perhaps let's get a better sense of the nature of your concerns. Is it a matter of us realizing that there isn't enough time to address these issues or a matter of as we speak today the sites aren't ready i think there's a distinction to be made there yeah yeah no absolutely i mean and and that's also why you know I, i've undertaken this tour ahead of time because our view is that phase one of the vaccination has been incredibly underwhelming but phase two is a lot more difficult than targeting simply just um, healthcare workers because you are dealing with um, over 60s, people who are intrinsically already at risk of having catching COVID-19 and having really uh, battling with it. And secondly, you're also dealing with people, particularly in rural areas, who aren't online, who can't simply register using the app or register on the EBDS system. So all of these things, Ayanda, actually require prior planning. So yes, if I rock up at a facility now, and uh, people will say, you know, well, we're not ready yet because we, we still have until the 17th of May. The reality is that these things require prior planning. If you need to order uh, fridges uh, for, your, for your clinic, that's stuff that already needed to be done. I visited Alex on Friday, um, the Alexandra Community Healthcare Center, and I was heartened to see that they'd already ordered their fridges. They have two extra fridges that are now ready to be there and they're ready and they're operational. So these things take time and they require planning. And ultimately, even when it was during phase one, we didn't need to wait for phase two to kick off for us to be able to start all of these preparations. And that's why I've gone there a little bit earlier so that I can raise the alarm, not for the purposes of just raising an alarm, but so that the minister can intervene um, where things are not going well. Yeah, that's a good way to segue into my next question. As expected, there are or is commentary already that the DA is politicizing the vaccination drive in our country. That you even expect from some of your political opponents. However, what in your processes are you doing to ensure that ordinary South Africans don't develop that perception? Because that's equally dangerous, if not more. Yeah. No, absolutely. Look, I mean, I think I think a, a product of it, uh, I think the, the reason behind sometimes the criticism, I think it's because sometimes people don't un can't understand what the role of parliament or the official opposition is. 
And I've got a very uh, different understanding, which is the fact that it's not just about opposing for the sake of opposing. It is simply about saying, we're working together. South Africans are literally in a race against time. The third wave could potentially be here in the next couple of weeks. If we don't get this right, Ayanda, we are going to be in trouble. And that trouble has got nothing to do. It, ultimately, when people start to die, yes, we can put all of that on the Minister of Health. But ultimately, we too, as leaders in Parliament, have a responsibility. And that's part of the reason why I've started to say to the councillors that I've been seeing, the DA councillors I've been seeing in the various provinces, that also it is important on you too to raise awareness in your communities. Go to people, go to old age homes, help people register on the system, because we all have a role to play. And so ultimately, Ayanda, it's not just about being in opposition, but it's also become being a leader, where people have elected you to serve them. And, um, and that's part of the reason. And I will be taking this up with the Minister in Parliament to say, look, here are the issues that are found on the ground. And luckily for him and I, we have a pretty good and decent working relationship. So he's very much aware that I take this job very seriously. And when I raise these things, it's not out of politicking, but also of, of, out of wanting the best for people. Yeah, that's heartening to hear. Uh, with that, are you able to share with us what you think is being done right, especially on our vaccination sites? Yeah. Look, I mean, um, there were some things that I, I really appreciated seeing. Um, I went to the Eastern Cape to Doranginza Hospital on Thursday. And, um, and you know, it, and with all the challenges, that site was one of the sites that were the first to be activated for the Phase 3B um, uh, of vaccination rollout. And it's working quite well. Um, and, you know, I managed to speak to some healthcare workers who were in the line, who were uh, waiting for their jabs. And, it is working well, but there is vaccine hesitancy amongst healthcare workers and amongst members of the community. And that's not something that you can put on the facility management. That's something as us as leaders and everybody in South Africa needs to encourage people to go get vaccinated. So I was pleased to see that the system is working, but obviously, as I said, the bigger than the weaker link will have to be that the primary healthcare facilities will be getting the vaccines from Doranginza. But what is really good to see is that the facilities that were already activated were quickly able to resume on Wednesday and get their, uh, and get their act together in terms of vaccinating healthcare workers. So that's really good. And you also saw some facilities, some hospitals who weren't part of the trial uh, rollout who have already started to. So it's really not uh, a, a, um, an impossible thing to ask to see readiness plans already because there were facilities. Uton Hague Hospital, for instance, has already got a, a, an area set up. They've already got, you know, all of these things, uh, your vaccination stations already put up. So there are places where this is happening, but there's also places where it's not happening. Cattle Manor, for instance, and KZN, not happening. So that's why it's important so that I have a very clear understanding and on the ground experience to say to Dr. Mkize, these are where the problems are. This is what we're going to, to experience because one of two things can happen on the 18th of May. Either no one will show up to get, get vaccinated or everybody will just flag there without having had an appointment. So those are the things that we've got to look out for and make sure that don't, they don't happen. Yeah, speaking about where they are and aren't issues, I have to ask you about what you know about Charlotte Maitleke in the wake of the fire that's taken place, right? Um, mm -hmm. There had been previous communication that the plan is to open as early as tomorrow. I don't know if you've been successful to confirm that, but the team here at Newsroom Africa has really had an uphill battle getting anyone to speak, even off the record, about mm. what is likely to take place tomorrow. Mm. What do you know as a matter of fact, and what is still unclear for you? Look, it's, uh, it's unclear for me as to when the, the reopening will be, but it's obviously quite important because this is a huge hospital in the, in the, in the province of Gauteng, and is likely probably going to become a distribution center for the other smaller facilities. So it is having that in the system completely shut down is a massive problem. But I, I too have no idea as to when uh, it's going to resume. I knew that there were various investigations that were taking place regarding the source of the fire. But that's definitely something my colleagues in Gauteng are going to be making sure that they sit on the department about. Because if you've got that facility shut off, then you've got a whole problem in the value chain in the system. Um, and so it, it, it absolutely needs to be resolved. Absolutely. Sevilla Kwakube, thanks very much indeed for your time. Really appreciate your chatting to us here on Newsfeed AM. Sevilla is the DA's spokesperson for health. Thanks very much once again.